Ian, a lot of these people can't get to invest into crypto because they can barely eat and pay bills. How can we get the average person involved and interested before it's too late? Great question. Great question. Uh, whoever, whoever asked that, thank you for, the, for that question. So this is a question I so do think of myself. And I think all I can do is really just share my story. So I think before anybody can even have disposable income, keyword being disposable, because when you invest, you're only investing what, you could, what you're willing to lose. Right? So that, that's why we call it disposable income. You have to have money that you can basically uh, burn on fire. Uh, apologies for the, 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 the bad pun, but basically money, you have no issues with being burned on fire to invest. Right? Because if you're investing rent money, house money, grocery money, that's, that's, that's something we would not recommend ever. So the, the question now is really, how does one get disposable income? I think before you even have money to invest, you have to make money. And I think the best way to make money is just through, you have to really create new ventures. So for, for me, for example, I was working a day job, nine to five at IBM, but I also had, I, I learned a new skill. The skill I learned was filming. I began make, create, creating videos. I bought a camera online, but let's say you, you have no money at all. I would say learn a skill. You can learn a skill by reading a book, right? Knowledge. So for example, to, there's so many skills you can learn through books. So whether it's web design, graphic design, writing, just develop a skill. And the best way to do that is by doing it for free or, or and then as you build that skill, then eventually people will be willing to pay you for that skill. So the skill I built uh, was, I learned how to first film video for free. So I'll go to different events and just do, do videos. Then uh, a friend asked me to, to create videos for them, right? So I began doing videos. So actually a friend who had a fashion show had me go and film their fashion show in DC. Did that for free. I mean, to them, it was a good service. I mean, to me, to me, it was really a, a time to just learn how to film for somebody else beside myself. Then began doing more events like that over the course of six to, to nine months. And I, I got decent enough where people were, were willing to pay me to do it. Now, obviously, I was no Martin Scorsese by, by any means, but people were, were willing to pay me uh, at a budget rate to, to film. Then I fast forward, um, probably half a year later, or maybe almost two years into it, I was now very proficient to a point where uh, in one month, I made more money filming over two weekends, basically about, I would say three or four days than I did at my job at IBM. And I, I didn't get there without kind of learning a skill and working my way up. And I kind of broke into the filming industry here in the DC region back then. This just was, oh man, like mid, I'll say maybe 2013, 14, 15 or so, to a point where I became the official videographer for Miss DC. And I did that by just willing, by willing to film her, her fashion shows and events for free. And then once I did that, I then had this resume because with her, she gave me, she, she got, got me into events like the, the Washington Redskins parties, uh, the fundraiser for charity. I had interviews with back then RG three with, uh, John wall. And I basically used her clout to build my portfolio. Cause I'll just make, I'll just make a video for free, which then I could parlay to then saying here, I've worked with this, I guess this uh, clientele. And I began getting jobs based off of that. Cause like, Oh, this guy's filming there's big companies, there's big, big names. Uh, but for, let's say you have a different scope. Uh, when I was back in high school, my first ever job was creating websites. And that was a skill I learned by just going to the library, reading a book. I taught myself HTML, some programming. My first job I was from my uncle. Actually, unfortunately, uh, I do have some sad news. My uncle did uh, pass away this week, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but he, he was very inspirational to me because uh, he, he was also an entrepreneur. Uh, he, he has some local schools here, basically some Montessori schools for like basically preschool schools. 
and he, he, he made his money through education. But anyway, uh, long story short is my first ever job was building websites for his schools. And he basically paid me for that. And that was something I learned myself just when I was still in high school uh, and then, then eventually college by going to the library, getting a bunch of books from back then it was Macromedia Dreamweaver, Microsoft Front Page. So I would say if you don't have money, the best way out, at least for me and my family, has always been through education. So learn a skill, learn a skill that's in demand. And sometimes, yes, it will take hard work. It will take one year, two years, maybe even longer. Develop that skill and be willing to do that skill for free just to learn and to also build up your portfolio. And then eventually you'll reach a point where you can parlay that into real work. Um, so that's kind of uh, my take on that. Uh, Bill, uh, do you have any any tips? Yes. So for crypto, when you know my legacy finance buddies called me up and said, Bill, you got to take a look at Bitcoin. You know, we're dying to hear what you think about it. I'm like, well, gee, I, I don't know how to think about it. So I started drawing it by hand. And then I think I downloaded the Coindesk app on my phone and I just started watching it every day. Right. So, you know, Ian took a more direct path by going to a library. You know, I did buy some crypto books, but I just watched it every day and I studied it. Right. I studied the price action. Like, gee, look, something happened in stocks and Bitcoin went up or down. Right. And I started to put two and two together. In other words, if you can look at the price of crypto and have some idea as to why it moved, okay, you now have a skill. You, you now understand what's happening. You have to understand what's happening now, or at least have a general idea before you can say what's going to happen in the future. And then once you've picked that up, maybe you've got, you know, 200 bucks for some ether, right? Yeah. So, sorry, just seeing a text here. Washington, D.C. imposes curfew for 11 p.m. <laughs> okay, um, but, but kind of go, go back to the person's question again, again so to kind of add more to it. Um, not to really kind of delve back into the whole politics and, or capitalism stuff, but I think in any market, any society, people with skills get rewarded, right? Uh, and I think this is really one way to break inequality because regardless of, of, of who you are, your background is, at the end of the day, if you're the, if, for example, if you're the only black guy who can do X, Y, and Z, and this business needs, needs that to survive, they'll pay you. They'll pay you, they'll, they'll tell you to write your own ticket, right? So I think learning skills that, that are in demand is the best way to kind of break through any, any system or, or just make money in general. Right, so for example, like with token metrics, the stuff we're doing here, I mean, this was something we had we had to learn, uh, all of us, right? Bill has his own skill, I have my own skills. Like for example, token metrics, like the data science, the machine learning, uh, putting together the team, the analysis, all this was, I mean, I, I didn't go to school for investing. This was something I learned myself in, in, my, in my own time. And yes, there is a sacrifice. And I think that's something people don't really understand is, you have to be willing to sacrifice those those vacations, those those weekends. I mean, because if if some people saw like uh, how I guess how un how boring my weekends are, I mean, you would have you would have no idea. I mean, like my weekends. Do you know my weekends in consist of me either working or learning something new. I basically weekends are basically days for me to learn new skills. Like for example, right now, I'm basically learning how to hack. I'm basically doing ethical hacking. Uh, I mean, because as somebody who's been hacked myself, and also as somebody who's building an application and knows crypto and everything, security is crucial. I mean, one skill I've been wanting to learn is just to, to just understand the mind of a hacker, right? So learning how to become an ethical hacker, uh, to me just made perfect sense. And then uh, I'm just watching lectures and lectures. I, I watch lectures like uh, about, a month ago, I watched, watched almost 50, over 50 hours worth of lectures on my favorite philosopher, Friedrich Nietzsche. Then uh, I've watched a bunch of lectures on other stuff, right? So I would say just learning, education is really the, the way forward. So if you don't, I, would, I mean, not to sound harsh and apologies in advance if I do sound to anybody out there, but 
uh, people who are maybe having some some challenges when it comes to to uh, I would say just earning income in general. I mean, yes, there's definitely oppression, and there the, the, the are people who are in a bad position, right, where things are unfair. But I would say, all in all, I mean, if you put in the time to learn a new skill that is in demand, you will get rewarded, right? Whether it's you learn to become a data scientist or you learn to become a programmer or a, an artist or whatever, just find something you like or you're curious about and put in the time. If you put in the time and it's something the market needs, you will be rewarded. All right. That's, that's, uh, that's my take on it. Uh, tell us what you think in the comments down below.